Hamba nati kulule wetu. Hamba nati kulule wetu. Hamba nati kulule wetu. Hamba nati kulule wetu. Kulule 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 wetu. Kulule 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 wetu. Kulule 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 wetu. Kulule 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 wetu. Good morning. Thanks for joining us this week for Sacred Space. I am Lydia Bucklin, and I'm so glad you're here with us. This is our weekly worship with the Episcopal Diocese of Northern Michigan. Uh, we get it all to you in under a half hour to hear this week's scripture and have a moment for prayer and reflection and listen to some beautiful music by our musician, Charles Murphy. So, Settle in and enjoy. This week I am preaching. Wahoo! <laughs> so let us join together in this week's collect. God of unclean hands, touching those rejected by the world, despised by the religious, guide us from false purity, which hides misshapen hearts. Lead us to the joyful feast in which all are renewed through Jesus Christ, the beauty of God's face. Amen. God who made us rich in our diversity gathered in the name of Jesus richer still in unity let us bring the gifts that differ and in splendid very ways sing a new church into being one in faith and pray radiant risen from the water robed in holiness and light male and female in God's image male and female God's delight let us bring the gifts that differ and in splendid very ways a new church in 
to be one in faith and love and praise. Trust the goodness of creation. Trust the spirit strong within. Dare to dream the vision promised, sprung from seed of what has been. Let us bring the gifts that differ, and in splendid, varied way, sing a new church into being, one in faith and love and praise. Bring the hopes of every nation, bring the art of every race, weave a song. Peace and justice, let it sound through time and space. Let us bring the gifts that differ and in splendid, varied way. Sing a new church into being, one in faith and love and praise. Draw together at one table. All the human family shape a circle ever wider and a people ever free. Let us bring the gifts that differ and in splendid, very way. Sing a new church into being, one in faith and love and. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. When the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around him, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, and folly. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. This morning, I would like to share with you a story that if you spend a lot of time with me, you may have heard before. It's called The Empty Chalice. And it's a story about a Roman Catholic priest who was called or really sent to this village in South Africa, a small congregation. And it was this total disaster. He'd been a faithful and effective pastor back in the States. But for some reason, these folks in South America had no interest in working with him. And he felt so frustrated as one initiative after another ground to a slow and painful halt. Why wouldn't the people get on board? 
Why did they resist the very program that would give them life? And he could tell them story after story of how it had worked in other places. Did they want their church to die on the vine? But finally, in utter disgust and disappointment, the missionary wrote home and he requested a transfer from his bishop back to the States, which was duly granted. And so the day came when his bags were packed and he was ready to leave. And there was this huge storm, huge rainstorm, and it trapped this woman who was in labor up on a mountainside. So the priest and two or three of these parishioners who had been so uncooperative in his ministry jumped into the old battered church station wagon. And they started up a steep and narrow winding mountain road on their mission of deliverance. And somewhere along the way, the station wagon broke down or it got stuck. And the missionary found himself hip to haunch with his parishioners out in the mud in pouring rain, trying to get this darn machine rolling again. And at some poignant moment, the priest turned to one of his companions and asked, so tell me, what did you all have against me? Why could you not accept the gift of myself and my leadership? And one of the old men looked him straight in the eyes and said, Padre, we have nothing against you, but you see when you came here, you came here with a full chalice and you wanted us to drink from it. It could have been different if instead you had come with an empty chalice, we would have filled it with our joy and sorrow, with our tears and laughter, with our history of our past and our dreams for the future. And then your ministry among us would have begun. It could have been different if you had come to us with your chalice empty. I've shared that story with you this morning because I believe it has a lot to do with our scripture lessons this morning. I know it's a story that I personally need to hear over and over again at various times in my life because I will confess to you that I am as guilty as that missionary of entering into new relationships and situations with too full a chalice. I do it all the time. I hate it, but it's true. And I know it's something I have to work on. This is an important truth for us to remember about Christian community, that it matters a lot how we present ourselves to one another. And it makes a very real difference in our lives when we can discover the grace and humility and even the courage and faithfulness to put aside our personal agenda and just encounter one another with a simple acceptance of who people are right now to rejoice in everything that's taken place in the mystery of other people's lives that makes them who they are. And to be touched by that very mystery in such a way that I myself am changed and my own personal agenda is changed by each and every person that I encounter. And this can be true even when we have serious disagreements about some very fundamental issues. That's part of the miracle of God's creation, the miracle which is celebrated in this morning's scripture lessons. The passage that we didn't read, but that comes to us this week from Deuteronomy chapter four reads, Moses said, so now Israel give heed to the statutes and ordinances that I am teaching you to observe so that you may live to enter and occupy the land that the Lord, the God of your ancestors is giving you. You must neither add anything to what I command of you, nor take anything away from it, but keep the commandments of the Lord your God with which I am charging you. This reading reminds us as God's people of the importance of holding fast to the traditions of our faith as they've been handed down to us. But then we've got this story from the Gospel of Mark. That story about the time Jesus sat down with his disciples to eat. And some of those picky scribes and Pharisees started criticizing again. Can you just hear them? This man calls himself a rabbi? Look at his disciples. They don't even wash their hands according to the traditions of the elders. How can he call himself a teacher when he doesn't even follow the ancient teachings himself? 
Do they know what they're doing? And they rejected him because of it. And we say, tsk, tsk, what's the matter with those rigid, unbending Pharisees? Can't they see Jesus? But just a moment ago, we were extolling the importance of holding fast to the traditions of the faith. So where do we stand? With the Pharisees or with Jesus? Or is it that simple? I don't think it is. I think we always live within the tension of these two values. We are indeed to hold fast to the faith as we've been given it. And yet, we are also called by God in Christ to change with the times, to discover new possibilities for ourselves as God's people as we move into the future of God's own making. Just as Jesus and his disciples did, they let go of some of the past traditions. They loosened up a little in order to accommodate the new demands of a new age. Being the people of God, followers in the way of Christ, means adapting to the world around us. It means opening our eyes and our hearts to the ways God is already at work in our communities. Maybe in ways that look and feel different, even unappealing or uncomfortable or inappropriate based on our old ways of doing and being the church. All things in Christ are made new. Nothing stays the same, nothing. And we have a choice to join in the work that God is up to around us or to attempt to hold fast to the way things have always been to sustain our own comfort and security. This is part of the mystery of God's creation, that each day is different than the one before. All things are new each morning when we open our eyelids. And yet there is a holy rhythm, a sacred pattern of everlasting truth, which offers us a foundation for our lives. And so in this strange and challenging way, we are called to live in constant change yet always within the patterns of God's eternal changelessness. And all that is asked of us is that we start each day with an empty chalice, that we start each relationship with an empty chalice. Because when we do, it's the love of God and not our own personal agenda which will shape the sort of person we will become and the sort of companion we can be for those around us. We in the Diocese of Northern Michigan here in the Upper Peninsula have been up to some exciting new things. We worship online. Thank you for joining us. We worship out in the wilderness with UP Wild. We gather in restaurants and in living rooms we embody Christ as we serve our neighbors at the Feeding America mobile food truck once a month outside the YMCA in Marquette. Many of us are indeed living into new ways of being the hands and feet of Christ while maintaining this holy rhythm and pattern of prayer and praise and thanksgiving and sacrifice and breaking bread together. And the tricky thing about new life, about resurrection, is that it does involve death. It does involve seasons of change in which the ways we've always done things so faithfully and so lovingly may sometimes have met their time. So we hold one another with care and with love and compassion as we straddle this line between what was and has been and continues to be the source of our strength and faith, while also reaching toward what is new and delicately emerging and in need of our attention and care and nurturing in order to live into these new births and new opportunities, of God's dream for us as a people loving and liberating one another. There is room for it all the old way, the new way, the way we can't even imagine. And we must remember to always leave room in our chalice, to always be on the lookout for the ways God continues to provide and lead us into new life. 
We're in it together. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, we pray for the universal church, the body of Christ, all so different, yet brought together through your Son, Jesus Christ. We ask that you give your church vision and unity, providing all that is needed so that we may be the good news in this world. God of justice, we pray for all nations and those that lead them. We ask especially for you to be with the people of Afghanistan. You, Lord, are a mighty and just God. We boldly ask for your healing hand to be upon that place, that peace and reconciliation will come about. Lord, help those who are in power to reach decisions that are made for the good of all, and help those around the world who look on in comfort to have compassion and mercy and to be moved into action where there is need. Creator, we lift before you this world and all its resources. Help us to care for it and each play our part to repair the damage we have done. We pray for those places that have been devastated and are experiencing suffering through earthquake, fire, floods, and drought. And we pray for our own needs. And now I invite you to join me in the verse and language of your own heart, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Blessed are you, creator of all. To you be praise and glory forever. As your dawn renews the face of the earth, bringing light and life to all creation, may we rejoice in this day that you have made. As we wake refreshed from the depths of sleep, open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.